Well, now tell me about Ghost Hunters International. How did you get on that show? Um, that was a year later. Mm -hmm. And the big controversy, of course, was that uh, Paranormal State wanted to delay the airing because they wanted to do some heavy promotions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, when they delayed the, the, you know, the airing of Paranormal State, um, they originally called it Paranormal U, and then mm -hmm. they changed it to Paranormal State, which was fine because it sounded better. Yeah. It aired the same week as GHI. Oh. So I went from you know a, a client that needed help to one of the world's finest investigators traveling with former CAPS members. It appeared to happen immediately, but in fact there had been. Right. Oh, and to uh, make matters worse, they edited it out all the me telling them I was a ghost hunter and here's some EDPs that I've caught from my home that I'd like to share with you. Uh -huh. They had no idea, and I had no idea that I was been chosen for a show later on. Mm -hmm. So it was a coincidence. Uh, they knew I was a ghost hunter for three years. They knew. Uh -huh. And uh, it was no, you know, even Ghost Hunters International knew I had done an episode of Paranormal State. Mm -hmm. They didn't care. Keith, Keith Johnson was on my episode. Keith Johnson also works with TAPS. Uh -huh. So we all worked together. And um, a, a year later, I'm sorry, well, they filmed that episode for Paranormal State in January 2007. In July of 2007, I got the call, um, we would like you to be the new cast member for GHI. Oh, wow. And of course I said yes. Why would I not want to travel exactly. the world, you know, with this amazing team going up to amazing places? Nobody would have said no. Did it end up being as great as you thought it would be? Yeah, it was a lot of work. <laughs> um, you know, I was kind of prepped, actually, and that's one of the things I talked to them about, is that I actually did have TV experience. I knew what it was like to be behind the camera already, mm -hmm. thank God, so I was not nervous in front of the camera. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a little bit different, though. We were working hard, because some of the conditions were cold, mm -hmm. harsh, jet lag, boom, get it done, next location, get it done, get it done. Um, but, you know, one of my questions, you know, when I watch Ghost Hunters, Ghost Hunters, Inter Hunters International, these shows, how much pressure is there on the investigators? Because, you know, you, 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 you're wanting something to happen. Yeah. But, you know, as a ghost hunter, you know, you, you go to ten houses and nine of them, nothing happens. Right. You know, but how does... How, does, how, do you, how do you deal with that pressure? It wasn't as bad as you think because these locations were world famous for their yeah. things. So, you, as you can expect, these locations were scouted, already thoroughly researched. Mm -hmm. You know, the homeowners, you're going on there. Yeah, yeah. You know, this is my house is haunted. Yeah. These are documented true. hauntings, and we already knew what we were getting into. The producers already knew what they mm -hmm. were getting into. Um, and there were some moments where if it was a dull night, we were actually pushed a little harder just to keep investigating, try again, mm -hmm. let's get something, we got to get something. Um, as they should, I mean, it's a high budget production, you're sending you know, almost two dozen people overseas, and um, you want to get a good show, but sometimes it just wasn't happening, and that's when Andy and Rod tell the client this place isn't haunted, not tonight. Mm -hmm. Now, um, you know, we see an, an hour program. Yep. Um, how much filming goes into an hour program? Uh, two weeks to make one episode. Two so weeks. You're, you're thinking one week per location. So if we did a haunted bed and breakfast, we were there for uh, a few days. Mm -hmm. um, the investigation was one night, but there's a lot of prep, there's a lot of interviews, there's a lot of client reveal, which is a totally different day. Um, the evidence to show it to the client. Um, the research is done the day after the investigation. Mm -hmm. Donna goes off to the library and leaves all of us behind to do all the hard work. So, <laughs> um, and, and she got lucky in a lot of places because she didn't know how to read the language. Oh, well, um, there in you Romania, go. they didn't really have English uh, encyclopedias, so um, we had to rely on the internet. And uh, you know, it was a very strict schedule. You know, you fly out there, you have one day to get acclimated. The rest of the week, you work your butt off, and then you do it all over again. Week after week after week. So, so what are you working on now? What are, um, what are your current uh, plans? Um, I'm working with a great team now called Live Sci-Fi. So it's LiveSciFi.tv. LiveSciFi.tv. Yes. I love this group. Um, I was actually asked to join because uh, I've been talking for quite a long time with this uh, with Tim Woods, the founder, mm -hmm. and uh, he's no drama, no BS. Mm -hmm. Okay, I am very for that. Not mm -hmm. the drama BS, but I, I I agree with that. Yeah. Um, his theory is to film investigations live, stream them live on the internet, free of charge. His wow. fan base, thousands of people, and the it's interactive. So while wow. you're investigating, people can text to the investigators' phones and say, look, I just saw a shadow over your shoulder, 
or why don't you go back in that room? And um, the people in the chat room actually get to chat directly with Command Central. That's impressive. So whoever, we take turns, whoever's in Command Central wants to sit down and take a break, can take notes, we can go in the walk and say, hey Jeff, I need you to go back in the morgue again. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's completely, you know, nobody else is doing it. Uh, it. It takes a lot of money and a lot of equipment, yeah. $100,000 worth of equipment. Wow. Um, equipment that a lot of people don't have. Yeah. And uh, we, we use infrared head cam, so everything that we see, the audience sees live. So there's no, um, there's no BS. And about what it. is the address again? Uh, live sci fi.tv. Live sci fi.tv. Yep. That's amazing. Yep. Cool. It's, uh, it's an amazing project, and we're working on an actual television project together. Excellent. Well, good luck with that. Thank you. Good luck with that. Yeah, you've got more experience than anybody with that sort of thing, really. Well, you know, I've been That's around great. to uh, some amazing locations, uh -huh. and, uh, you know, I've met so many people. I've been very fortunate, and I think with my paranormal background, it's, um, you know, you're not, as you hear all the time, you're not in this for the money. It's for the, it's, for the, it's for the rush of paranormal investigating. It's for the thrill. It's for the oh my god factor. Yep. And, and, and you, uh, you don't do the conferences for the money either, I no, no, no. <laughs> Not all the time. You cross um, your fingers and hope to cover the yeah. expenses. I like to travel, you know, because since I haven't been out here since I was about eight years old. Okay. So um, I've seen so many different states I never thought I'd ever see. Well, again, we're, we're so glad to have you here. Uh, everybody everybody loves that you're here. Thank you. Um, nice thank you. Here. Thank you so much. Thank and you. Uh, maybe we can have you back sometime. Oh, you got it. Next year. Excellent. Well, thank you. Take